everybody. Welcome back. This is Lisa Larson and podcast Pete. Hello, Pete. Hello, Lisa. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Pretty good. How was your Juneteenth? It was fine. It was fine. And it was nice uh, that, you know, more things are getting into the consciousness for constructive purposes. Yeah, it really was. And I'm, I'm glad that it's a federal holiday now. And I and I will and I know that we already had had this one conversation. But for those of you who are seeing me now with my new specs, I, I know that you you didn't notice when you first saw me. I and like to him your now. credit and to your credit, you didn't try and gloss it over. You just admit it. No, I didn't. I didn't get it. it it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. You know, if I look at your face and miss the glasses, you know, and I'm still looking at your face. I guess that doesn't say much for how much I notice, but they are nice. <laughs> well, you noticed at the time that I was sitting on a couch, you noticed an orange shirt, you noticed the cat really, in the background. <laughs> I really tried through the questionnaire. I really did. <laughs> yes, you you, you made a, an honest effort. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, Today, we are going to be talking about something very serious. We're going to move this down. We like to have our, our laughs, but this is not a laughing matter. We're going to be talking about the hard decision of um, choosing to euthanize your, your babies. And some people have a hard time with that. Uh, it's it's not just the the making the call. We're going to be doing a series on these. Uh, we'll be talking about making the call in the next series, but in the next episode. But this episode is going to be talking about euthanasia, what it is, why it's important, and um, and, and it is something that all animal parents have to deal with, I shouldn't say all, most animal parents have to deal with at some point, they have to deal with this decision of do I call the vet and have them euthanized or or what? So um, it's a very difficult decision to make. It's something that I deal with regularly as an animal communicator, and we thought it would be important to uh, devote a podcast to it. Well, it, it certainly is important, uh, to say the least. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with it. And, and, and so, Lisa, with your experiences in animal, animal communication, uh, I'm sure there are benefits to euthanasia. And, and maybe we can start with why um, euthanasia is better than just letting the animal go its natural path in some cases. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I don't always like to think of terms in better than because there are some animals that will just go and they will just go peacefully, but usually it's not when we're, when we're, we're agonizing over this. The problem is that there are some people who they will let the animal suffer because they don't want to kill they feel like they're killing the animal or they feel like animals should die naturally or transition naturally and that's what we want to talk about today um i want to address a couple of those things first of all for the people who say that they feel like they're killing their animal I've had animals tell me, you're not killing me, you didn't kill me, you released me from my suffering. So the humane thing to do would be to euthanize it. Unfortunately, there are a few people, more than a few people out there that would hear that and say, no, I'm just not going to do it. And they will let that animal suffer and suffer and suffer and suffer and suffer. And it really is in many cases, a cruel thing to do. So what do you say to those people? Well, I tell them that euthanasia is the one right that animals have that humans don't in most of the world. Hmm. You know, there's a few states in the country, in the US that have it, but 
generally it's not generally it's something accepted for animals and not accepted for people and yet it's that one right that they have that we don't and i have never once spoken to an animal who when i've asked would you rather be helped to the other side or would you rather go naturally have they said no i just want to i just want to stay until i suffer and i can't suffer anymore interesting you know the problem is that people think that if they go to sleep one night and when they wake up in the morning their animal has passed they they put it into their mind that it was a peaceful passing sure and it's not necessarily that way i i had um an experience with my mom and she was not able to let go I, I her cat was so ready to let go i drove all the way up there five hours and i kept trying to say we need to call the vet i kept saying we need to call the vet we need to call the vet she says no we have to wait till tomorrow and this was before i did this work this was before i i would have done it differently now i would mm -hmm. have have pushed more now oh. but as it was I slept on the floor with that cat and he passed in the middle of the night with my arms around him. And he, I'll tell you, it was not peaceful. It was wow. long and it was suffering. And there was absolutely no reason that he should have had to go through that. When we adopt an animal, we make that agreement that at some point, we are probably going to have to make this decision because we know that our lifespans are generally longer than theirs. And we have to make that agreement that, you know, that we're going to make that decision for them altruistically. That's the other thing that I tell them is that it is the most altruistic thing that you can do for your animal because there's no no animal parent that really really loves their animal that wants them to suffer and what i find is the people who refuse and will let them go on and on and on and on it's out of pure fear it, not only is it fear but it's the consideration that they are going to suffer by the mere act of bringing this to pass versus not yes they're putting their suffering yes they're putting their emotional suffering over their animals physical suffering absolutely and that's that's just not what we want to be as animal parents as guardians as moms as dads we don't want to do that to our animals yeah so that's when we talk about the benefits of euthanasia, I always say it's better a day too early than a day too late, because if you think about them 10 years down the line, if you do it a day too early, then what you will remember from that animal's life is you'll remember all of the good things, all of the happy moments that you've had. But if you do it a day too late, the only thing you're going to remember is that you made that animal suffer for one more long, long 24 hour day. And you will remember them just being in not being able to eat, not being able to lie down, not being able to be comfortable. And why would you want to remember them like that? Yeah. Well, no, no, you, you don't want to remember them that way. You want to remember them as pain free as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other thing that I also suggest once they have uh, made that decision that yes they feel that they can choose euthanasia is in many places in this country and i'm sure in canada and i don't know about the rest of the world but i know in the in the u.s there are a lot of places now that do nothing but home euthanasia 
Now, it doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with going to the vet. If you need to go to the vet, if they're suffering and you can't get somebody to come to your house, taking them to the vet as soon as possible when they need to go, they, they need to go. But a lot of times in, at your, you're dealing with an animal who's been ill and going downhill and going downhill. And when people call me many times, they're saying, you know, when is, when is it time? And while I don't make that decision, I can tell them how the animal is feeling, if they're ready to go, because many times they're hanging on for the people. And we're going to talk about this in the next next episode. But, you know, I always tell people to plan ahead and think about if they can consider home euthanasia. Because when you think about if you were ill, how many humans say, I don't want to die in a hospital bed. I want to be in my own bed at home. And that's why we have hospice. And now hospice care for animals is starting to be a new, bigger thing. Uh, And again, I don't have a lot of experience, but this makes so much more sense than going to a clinical environment. Yes. Yes. And it's interesting because one of the people that I met at, it was some event that I was doing. It was a woman who's a vet and she started one of the very first home euthanasia services in this area. And when I was talking to her, she said, that's exactly why, because I would see these people bring their animals in and they'd be lying on this card cold table and not all vets do that you know now people vets have little rooms and quiet places and and it just depends on the vet but it's still not like being home but she says i saw these animals being brought in to an, a, a cold environment where there were lots of people and they were scared they didn't know what was going on and i thought wouldn't it be better if they could just do this at home well certainly you help uh, pet companions and pet parents, but do you actually help? And and if you do, how do you help the actual animal pass or can you? Um, I can, and we are actually going to devote a whole episode to that. But in brief, yes, I can. Um, there are some people that will call me for transition to help with that transition. And, um, what I'll do is I won't be there physically, but I will start communicating and doing healing to the animal beforehand. And I'll end before we get to Pete's ponderings, I'll end with this one story that I just love. Uh, there was a dog that I worked with for years and years. Her dad first time he ever had his own animal through conversations with me was the first time he ever even thought about thinking of himself as her dad. And she was just a a kid when we, when we first started and I, I knew her her whole life and he was a monk. It, uh, it's a local, um, a local place here. I can't remember the name of it. Self-realization center. Yes. And, um, I remember when he called and told me that she had cancer and we were, we were so worried. We didn't think that she was going to even last a couple of months, but she went and she lasted, I think it was 14 more months, wow. year, year and two months, but about four months before she passed, you know, and we were doing continual communication, seeing how she was doing and helping her through this. About four months before she passed, we talked to her and I was trying to get him ready. Now he was this per- this exact person we're talking about today. He really, really didn't know anything about euthanasia. He didn't know about, he wasn't I'm not going to say he didn't know about it, but it wasn't a decision he had ever had to make. And he was having a really hard time dealing with that idea of it. So about four months before she actually passed, we started having these conversations about the the process of euthanasia. And I asked her, when the time comes, do you want to be helped? And she said, Yes, she wanted to be helped. And not only did she want to be helped, 
she laid out exactly what she wanted. She said she wanted a full memorial type of thing, like he would do services because all of the monks were her family, she felt. Yes. And so she showed it to me all. And so I explained it to him what she wanted. We went another four months. He finally called and said, it's time. Will you help her cross? And so I didn't, like I said, I wasn't there, but I was giving her Reiki, I was connecting with her. And as I was seeing this happen, I could see all of the monks standing around. I could see the, the venue that they were doing it in. And I kept saying, I kept seeing um, what I saw as pink roses. And so afterwards I, I I typed out a um, a message from her and uh, the whole experience and, and, and sent it to him. And for instance, this one little validation that I loved was I, when I told him I saw the pink rose and he says, yes, well, we had red and white rose petals that we threw on her body. Huh. And then I, I saw them carrying her out. Like to me, I saw it carrying her out like on one of those stretcher types of things. You but know? elevated, elevated. Elevated. And, um, and it wasn't exactly that. They told me that she was on a, a, a very specific, uh, meaningful rug and they rolled the, all of the monks worked as pallbearers. They rolled it up and they carried her out like that. So a procession. Uh, they did a procession and it was exactly what she wanted wanted is exactly what she asked for and it was something that i felt like i was a part of i saw so much of it and was part of that whole experience even though i wasn't physically there and it was for me one of the most meaningful experiences because you know, when I work with animals, especially animals like that, I work with them for their whole lives. This was this was a dog I worked with, with her for her entire life. So I knew her her entire life. And so it's very meaningful to me as well. And and it was just the send off that they gave her was just beautiful, you know, and everybody can do that in their own way. Everybody yeah. can make their animals send off peaceful and beautiful. And that is the whole point of euthanasia. Well, you're so fortunate to have had this experience because of your developed skills in communicating. You know, you're so fortunate. You know, what I ponder about today is not anything trivial because this is not trivial. This is important passing is is as important if not more than entering and in comparison entering might feel like an accident compared to passing so my pondering is that to you because you can and have communicated with animals on the other side have they given you indication of appreciation when it goes good. Absolutely. Yes. How interesting. How interesting. Absolutely. Yeah. They they're so grateful. They're, but it's it's not so much that they're grateful to me, they're grateful to their parents that made that decision for them. Yes. Yes. They, they're grateful to their parents that made that decision for them. Because I don't I don't help as many animals cross as I help prepare them for crossing um but I'll, I'll give you this one more example i can't remember the dog's name but the dog had dementia the woman's father was on the other side and had dementia and before he crossed and when the dog i did help this dog pass when the dog passed, I saw not only my mom's dog, who I was very close to, there 
helping this animal cross over because she, she was confused. But I saw the the dog's mom's human father on the other side with outstretched arms saying, guiding the way. Yes. That animal. Welcoming. Welcoming. And that, you know, and of course, by the time she got over there, she didn't have dementia anymore. And she was just so grateful for all of the they all are for all of the love that that their parents give them and and for making that altruistic decision. Yes, they thank me, but it's really that they thank their parents. Well, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. So I hope that this helps you understand. I hope it helps our viewers understand and gives them a little bit more insight into this topic. Well, certainly we're raised with a stigma regarding euthanasia. Yeah. So how do people reach you? Yeah, you can reach me on my website. It's pausetalk.net. My book is on Amazon. It's called Pause Talking, A Course in Communicating with Animals. And it's on Amazon. It's on Apple Books. If you are enjoying this and you want us to keep doing it, please hit that like button and the subscribe. And if you want to be notified of other uh, videos that come out, uh, hit that bell. And we will also very soon be putting these all as podcasts on Apple. I think they're already on iHeartRadio, but we'll, we'll start disseminating these as audio podcasts as well so that you can listen to them in the car or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Just to let you know, the next podcast episode, we're going to continue on with this euthanasia series, and it's going to be how to know when to call the vet. So look for that, but we're, we're thankful that you're here. Take care. Have a good weekend. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.